Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 26th day of May. It is Friday, and back live, and it was a good uh, mission trip to these capitals, and even did a lot of uh, handing out of gospel tracts at the state parks, especially Yellowstone, and it was a good trip, and many people got tracts and heard the word, and uh, had to talk to many different people, and the national parks are a good place to go and uh, be a bold witness for the Lord and tell people about Jesus. I uh, saw many people from other countries, especially uh, China, and uh, they got to uh, get the word and get gospel tracts and um, much reception there. Good reception, I should say. So, amen. So, thanks for praying and continue to pray for uh, those that uh, took the tracts and heard the word and for those Christians that we ran across and talked to also and for the governors of each of those states uh, Idaho, Montana, Washington State, and Oregon. Amen. And so we continue to pray for uh, these mission trips as we continue here in the future. So, amen. All right. And so now uh, the title for today's um, uh, devotional is titled The Furtherance of the Gospel, which is uh, quite a message for after we get back and we need to keep on going and getting the gospel out. Amen. Even today. And this is for Friday, May 26th. Amen. And before we get started on all that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he too can be your Lord and Savior today if he's not already. So praise the Lord. Amen. All right, we're going to start with uh, today's scripture song. And it's from Micah uh, 6 8. So press play and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. So here we go. Micah 6 8. He, he hath showed, showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Right. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee. But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee. But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. To walk humbly with thy God. All right, and we should uh, do these things to... Uh, do justly and love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God, right? All right, so put that back to the beginning there, and we'll do yesterday's and today's devotionals, uh, the scripture songs, I should say, uh, here after uh, the end of the broadcast. So now we'll get into today's topic for Friday, May 26th, titled The Furtherance of the Gospel. Praise the Lord. All right, so Philippians 1.12 is the passage, and it says, But I would ye should, uh, should understand, right, let me reread that, But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. Philippians 1.12, and we know this is the Apostle Paul speaking, and the author today is R.C., that would be, the initials for R.C. That would be Rex Cobb, and he is from Baptist Bible Translators in Bowie, Texas. So let me read you what he wrote today on this topic of the furtherance of the gospel. He uh, writes here, The Apostle Paul lived with one desire, to know Christ and to make him known or to further the gospel. He said, Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, Romans 15.20a. And let's read all of Romans 
uh, that passage there, 1520a, read the whole entire passage there. In Romans chapter 15. <clears throat> All right, Romans 15 and uh, 20a. And it says here, so you write, uh, it says here again, Yea, so I have strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. And then verse 21 says, But as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. Amen. All right, so that was the rest of that uh, verse there. And continuing on in the topic, he writes, uh, He suffered indescribable hardships to accomplish this goal. However, he saw these afflictions as ways to spread the gospel. He wrote to the Philippian believers from a Roman prison. How could he further the gospel while confined to, in jail? Is the question. Good question. He won souls there. Let's see Philemon verse 10. So he won souls there. See Philemon verse 10. So let's go to the book of Philemon. Only one chapter there. So Philemon. And verse 10. All right. Get there. Philemon. All right. Philemon verse 10. It says, I beseech thee, uh, they, I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. Amen. <clears throat> so Onesimus, talking about there, I encourage you to read all of Philip. Philemon uh, chapter 1, only one chapter there, and continue on in the text of the devotional, he says, including, so he says he won uh, souls uh, there, see Philemon verse 10, including members of Caesar's household, Philippians 4.22 is the reference, also other believers were emboldened to preach Christ, seeing the steadfast of Paul, amen. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Philippians 1.14 What are you doing today that would encourage others to serve God? Hmm, good question. So, what are you and I doing today that would encourage others to serve God? Besides the other sacrifices that he made, Paul also gave up his right to marry so he could travel and minister without the encumbrance of a family. He wrote, Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord, and Cephas, First Corinthians 9, 5. Nothing wrong with getting married and having a family, but it would be good to have somebody that would uh, have a desire to serve the Lord and go with you and be a bold witness with you. Amen. So, Praise the Lord. All right, continuing on, he writes, What sacrifices are we making in order to further the gospel? We will meet Paul in heaven. What if he asks about our invert, uh, involvement in the furtherance of the gospel? And then he concludes with this, Smile, amen? <laughs> smile. So, and let's keep on getting the gospel out there and encouraging others to further the gospel and get it out into all the world. Praise the Lord. All right. And like I said, a good place to do that is National Parks. And also I've been going to the Capitol buildings and preaching the gospel there and giving Bibles. Uh, started on this trip giving Bibles to each of the governors. So pray that they would get these Bibles and they would read them and look at them and see their need for salvation and for Christ. And they turn to the right way. And amen. All right. So that is the end of today's topic from the Baptist Bread, and now we'll grab the Daily Strength book, and this is Daily Strength Volume 1, Devotions for Bible-Believing Study, by Douglas D. Stauffer and Andrew B. Ray, and we're continuing through this topic of equity this week, and today is Day 111, Friday, titled A Good Path, and it says here in Proverbs 2, 6 through uh, 9, uh, Proverbs 2, 6-9 says, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. 
he keepeth the paths of judgment, and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness, and judgment, and equity, yea, every good path. And now introductory thoughts for today. It says the last few lessons revealed how equity should always be linked to judgment. The passage today reiterates this truth, suggesting that righteousness, judgment, and equity are not only closely associated, but inseparable. Verse 8 reveals that it is the Lord who keepeth the paths of judgment. Verse 9 points out the righteousness, judgment, and equity. Um, so, verse 9 points out that, that righteousness, judgment, and equity are said to be the good paths. These good paths stand in stark contrast to those paths that seem right to the world, but in the end are the ways of death. And the references are Proverbs 14.12, in Proverbs 16.25 in your King James Bible, the saint of God has a clear choice. He can do things his own way, resulting in an untimely, untimely death, or he can follow after God's plan and find that God preserves the way of his saints. The choice is simple. Choose God's good path and not the well-trodden path traveled by the world. God's plan or path is for a man to judge with righteousness and equity. Right? All right. So that was the introductory thoughts. Devotional thoughts we have for children. And you can apply this to everyone in some aspects. So for children, it says, If the lights went out in your house, how would a flashlight help you not to stumble or trip over things? Psalm 119.105 tells us that God's word shows us the good path in life. And in parentheses, he writes how to have the right relationship with the Lord and with others, along with how to get to heaven and how to stay on the right path. So that was for children. And of course, you can apply that to everybody, both uh, children and adults. And now for everyone, it says, are you stubborn when shown the error of your ways? Oh, ouch. Do you find that you're... You insist on doing things your own way? Hmm. Do you frequently struggle to follow the good path revealed by God in his word? Is your judgment based on righteousness and equity? If your judgment is not uh, characterized by these traits, you are no different than those in the world who judge based on wicked biases. Ah, so good things to take heed of. Good questions here. All right, now prayer thoughts. It says here, ask God to give you light to follow the good path and never presume upon the goodness and uh, grace of God. Ask God to show you the importance of sound judgment during your decision-making process. And then the song for today from the book is titled, Who Would uh, True Val Valor See? And not too familiar with this one, so we won't do that one today. And now put that aside and actually do the hymn for today, which is titled Sweet Peace, the Gift of God's Love. And so we'll do this. I had a little struggle here last time I tried to do this on the broadcast a week or so ago. And this is hymn 385 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And this is titled Sweet Peace. And it's uh, uh, One Peace with God, a spiritual song. And this is written by Peter P. Billhorn, 1865 to 1936. So we'll go ahead and sing along here with the instrumental. Amen. <clears throat> All right. comes to my heart one sweet strain a glad and a joyous refrain I sing it again and again sweet peace the gift of God's love peace peace sweet 
wonderful gift from above. Oh, wonderful, wonderful peace, sweet peace, the gift of God's love. By Christ on the cross, peace was made. My debt by his death was all paid. No other foundation is laid for peace, the gift of God's love. Peace, peace, sweet peace, wonderful gift from above. Oh, wonderful, wonderful peace, sweet peace, the gift of God's love. When Jesus our Lord I had crowned, my heart with this peace did abound. In Him the rich blessing I found, sweet peace, the gift of God's love. Peace, peace, sweet peace, wonderful gift from above. Oh, wonderful, wonderful peace. Sweet peace, the gift of God's love. In Jesus for peace I abide, And as I keep close to His side, There's nothing but peace doth betide. Sweet peace, the gift of God's love. Peace, peace, sweet peace, wonderful gift from above. Oh, wonderful, wonderful peace, sweet peace, the gift of God's love. Amen. All right, no him for to uh, no uh, story I should say for today so I'll give you the references and then we'll get back to the scripture songs and conclude it after that so stanza one is Ephesians five uh, let me see five nineteen and then first uh, Corinthians three eleven and then the second stanza is Colossians one twenty and Romans um, or actually um, Ephesians five nineteen is only the uh, one for um, refrain one, and no, uh, only one reference there. And actually, reference uh, for First Corinthians three eleven is for stanza two. So stanza two again is uh, Colossians one twelve uh, twenty, and then First Corinthians three eleven. Apologize about that. And then uh, stanza three is Romans five one, and then Romans five ten, and then stanza four is John. 1427 and John 1633 and then so those are all the references for each stanza and then for the refrain is uh, James 1 17 and Philippians 4 7 all right so that is the end of the hymn and I'll put that aside and get into the scripture songs again and we'll do those and conclude after that so here we go yesterday's was uh, let's see Turn back a page, the 25th, and it was Isaiah 38:20. So press play here and sing these scripture songs again. Isaiah 38:20. The, the Lord was ready to save me, therefore we will, we will sing, sing my songs to the string instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. The Lord was ready. Ready to save me, therefore we will sing. We sing my song.
to stringed instruments all the days of our life. In the house of the Lord we will sing. In the house of the Lord we will sing. The Lord was ready, ready to save me. Therefore we will sing. The Lord was ready ready to save me, therefore we will sing. Sing my songs to the stringed instruments all the days of thy life. In the house of the Lord we will sing. In the house of the Lord we will sing. The Lord was ready ready to save me, therefore we will sing. Glory. I didn't say amen. Oh, I just said amen there, but... He has showed thee, O man, right. what is good, right. and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. He has showed me a man what is good, and what did the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Showed thee, O man, what is good, and what did the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God, and to walk humbly with thy God. Alright, that is the end of today's broadcast, but before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song for the 27th, and we are almost through with this month, and we're going into June here uh, pretty soon, and tomorrow again is the 27th, and Hebrews 2.9 is the scripture song, and it says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, who are for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. That is right. All right, so that's the scripture song. And then the Baptist bread for tomorrow is, let's see, tomorrow is the 27th. And Saturday is titled, The Eagle Has Landed. And the passage is John 14, 1 through 3. And so that's tomorrow's uh, Baptist Bread topic. And then the Daily Strength topic for tomorrow as we continue through equity. And tomorrow will be the last day of this topic. And then next week we move into the topic of faith for week 17. And tomorrow is day 112, Saturday, titled Perverting All an Equity. So Perverting All Equity. And the passage is from Micah 3, 8 through 12. And so we'll do that for the daily strength topic as we conclude this week's topic of equity. And then next week is faith. And I believe there's two weeks of that topic. So praise the Lord. All right. And then tomorrow's hymn is titled Wonderful Peace. And this is 386 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. Another one on this Peace with God uh, hymns here. There's two of these. And then... The following day, we go into this uh, topic of the assurance of salvation. So, that's 386 tomorrow. Wonderful peace. So, there you go. And if you want to get a copy of the hymn book, excuse me, the hymn book, and then the uh, volume 1 through 4 uh, books of the Daily Strength, this is the 
cover of it and in the hymn book. They're both available on MelodyPublications.com as we can get those. And then the Scripture Songs CDs and book are available online at www.DailyScriptureSongs.com. That is Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website. They are missionaries to Port Kaituma, Diana, so you can pray for them and all missionaries around the world, those that we know and those that we don't know. And so pray for them. And so that's that information. And in the Baptist Bread devotional book, this is a cover for this month and next month. If you order now, you'll probably get the one uh, for uh, July and August. And that is available on baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And that second website has other books available to read. And then, of course, the Bible, the King James Bible, is the Word of God. This is the book that we should always be getting into first and reading it, studying it, and praying to the Lord that he would show us what he wants us to see as we're trying to live more Christ-like lives while we're here on the earth. So that's right. All right. So that is the end of today's broadcast. So thanks for watching. And if you know somebody who doesn't have the Facebook uh, channel or uh, Facebook at all, you can direct them to the YouTube channel. By going to Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting or typing in Baptist Bread Devotional and look me up that way. And you can like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I post them up. Amen. And then also uh, the um, podcast where I read different heroes of the Christian faith and missionary stories. And right now going through uh, the story about uh, Jacob the Shazer. And we'll be starting back up on that. Been gone for a couple weeks, so we'll start that back up uh either today or tomorrow, do another chapter. So check that out at God's Messenger Lighthouse Podcast on Anchor, Spotify, or iHeartRadio. So, all right, that's it. So thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now. Remember, Jesus saves. Believe on him. Amen.